$300 for a one minute video. And this is one of the animation which I created for my client. But in this video, I'll be showing you the complete process of how I created this one animation from the video step by step. So you guys can exactly learn how to create them yourselves. And as well as I'll be sharing the project file for free in the description of the video. So you guys yourself can do a deep analysis of how the animation was made. So yeah, now let's get right into it. So first we'll start by creating a new solid and our composition will be in format of 1920 by 1080p. And once our solid is created, we'll be adding a gradient ramp effect onto it. Next, we'll be changing the ramp shape to radial ramp. And once that is done, we'll be adding darker colors similar to what you can see on the screen right now. We'll be adjusting the coloring so that a cinematic look is achieved, something like this which you can see on the screen. Next, we'll be using the rectangle tool to create a rectangle square shape. And once that is done, we'll be keeping its stroke off and we'll be keeping its fill on. Next, we'll be lowering the opacity a little bit so that we can see through our shape layer. And next, my aim is to make the anchor point of the square right in the middle. So I'll be using a plugin of Mr. Horse, which is a free plugin called Animation Composer. And I'll be using it to adjust the anchor point, but I feel like it's still not in the middle. So I'll be using this anchor point mover tool to adjust the anchor point to where I feel like it is right in the middle. Once that is done, we'll be making our shape layer to 3D and as well as make our background solid to 3D as well. Next, we'll be pressing Ctrl D to make a duplicate of our square because here we want to create a cube animation. We'll be needing multiple duplicates of our square shape layer. And once our first duplicate is created, first we'll be turning on the snapping button. Once that is done, we'll be using the anchor point mover tool to move the anchor point of the second shape layer on middle and left. Once the anchor point is set, we'll be moving the second shape layer to the right of the main first shape layer, like we as can see on the screen right now. We will be renaming the second shape layer to right so that we can remember that this is the right side of the cube. Once we have renamed the right shape layer, next we'll be creating another duplicate of shape layer 1 and this time using the anchor point mover tool, we'll be setting its anchor point to right and middle. And once that is done, we'll be changing its position to the left side of the shape layer 1 and as well as we'll be renaming this shape layer to left. And similarly, we'll be renaming the first shape layer to front so that we can remember that this is the front side of the cube. Once that is done, we'll be parent linking both the shape layers left and right to front shape layer. The reason why we have done this is because now you can see that once we are rotating the front shape layer, at the same time, the right as well as the left shape layer are moving as well. Currently, the background solid was in 3D space as well, so that is why the shape layers were going through the background. Now we'll be adjusting the rotation of the right side of the cube and change its Y rotation to minus 90. Similarly, we'll be changing the Y rotation of the left layer and we'll be making its value to plus 90, where now you can see that the left and right side of the cube are perfectly set. Now once this is done, we'll be creating another duplicate of the front shape layer. Now we'll be looking to position the back shape layer at the back side of the cube. So what we'll be do is we'll be selecting the back layer and we'll be adjusting its position so it becomes right at the back side of the cube, like you guys can see on the screen right now. Once that is done, we'll be creating another duplicate of the front shape layer and this time we'll be creating the top side of the cube. So we'll be renaming the shape layer to top. Once our top shape layer is created, we'll be using the anchor point mover tool to move its anchor point to down and middle, like you guys can see on the screen right now. Next, we'll be moving the position of the top shape layer right at the top of the front shape layer and we'll be parent linking it to the front shape layer as well. Once that is done, we'll be adjusting the x-axis rotation and set its value to minus 90. Next, we'll be creating the final side of the cube, which is the bottom side. For that, we'll be creating another duplicate of the front shape layer and then renaming the layer to bottom. And using the anchor point mover tool, we'll be adjusting its anchor point to top middle. After that, we'll be adjusting its position to the bottom of the front shape layer. Then we'll be parent linking it to the front shape layer and then adjust its x rotation to plus 90. And now you guys can see that our cube is completely made. After that, we'll be adding an Apple company logo onto our composition. And I got this PNG from pngwing.com and then add it into our composition as well as make it 3D by clicking the 3D button. We'll be adjusting the size of the logo because its size is currently really big. And then we'll be adding a gradient ramp effect onto our logo. Next, we'll be adjusting the coloring of the gradient to something which you guys can see right now. Now, once that is done, we'll be parallel linking it to the front shape layer. And then I'll be adjusting the position of the logo so it can be right in the middle of the cube like you guys can see right now on the screen. After that, I'll be lowering the opacity of all the sides so that we can get more visibility of the logo. Once that is done, I'll be looking to adjust the anchor point of the front shape layer as well because right now the rotation of the cube is being made from the front shape layer but I want the rotation to be made from the middle of the cube which is where the logo is. So we'll be using the anchor point mover tool to adjust the anchor point of the front shape layer right where the apple logo is so that the rotation of the cube can be done from there itself. After that, we'll be adding a gradient ramp effect onto all sides of the cube and we'll be adjusting the colors of the sides so that the sides and the edges of the cube are visible perfectly. And after adding the gradient ramp effect to all the sides, this is how exactly our cube looks like. 
Now I will be unhiding the background solid layer and this is how currently our composition looks like. I will be increasing the z-axis of the front layer so the back side of the cube is not being collided with the background layer. And now you guys can see on the screen right now this is how our cube looks like. I have made some more changes to the gradient ramp effect of some of the sides to what I feel looks best currently and this is currently how our cube looks like. Next I'll be adding a CC light sweep effect onto our logo so that our logo can be more stylized and I'll be adjusting the gradient ramp effect of the logo as well so that our logo looks currently like this. Also I'll be adding a drop shadow effect onto our logo and after the changes this is how exactly our cube looks like. Next I'll be looking to create a triangle so I'll be using the star tool to create a shape layer and once our star shape layer is created we'll be going into the polystar 1, next going to polystar path 1 and then change the points from 5 to 3 so that we can get a perfect triangle and then I'll be adjusting its rotation so it looks something like this and then we'll be adding a gradient ramp effect onto the triangle as well once that is done I'll be using the anchor point mover tool to adjust the anchor point of the triangle to right in the middle of the bottom next I'll be creating a scale up animation so for that I'll be creating a keyframe first at 100% and then move the keyframe forward and then create another keyframe at 0% once the keyframes are created I'll be selecting both the keyframes pressing the fnan button and using the graph editor I'll be making it something like this and you guys can see this is how our scale up animation of the triangle looks like now once this is done I'll be creating another duplicate of our triangle and I'll be adjusting the colors of the gradient of this second triangle and then add a deep glow effect onto our second triangle so that our scene can be more stylized and get more depth and we'll be adjusting the keyframes of the second shape layer so that it is actually scaled up a little later like you guys can see on the screen right now and once our triangles are set we'll be selecting both the triangles and then pre-composing them and as well as make them 3D once the triangle composition is set we'll be creating another duplicate of this composition so that we can add another set of triangles on the right side of the scene we'll be adjusting its rotation so it looks something like this Next we'll be creating these text boxes. So first for that I'll be needing these stock images of people and I'll be quickly going to Canva to get those images. And once we have collected the images, I'll be using the rounded rectangle tool to create a rounded rectangle. Like you guys can see on the screen. And I'll be increasing the roundness of the shape layer so that the edges can be more rounder. And then we'll be pressing the fill button and selecting the linear gradient part and stylize our fill to linear gradient. Once we have done that, I'll be adjusting the colors so it looks something like this. And using these two points, I'll be adjusting the placement of the gradient and in the end it will look something like this. Now we'll be pressing the stroke button and similarly for the stroke as well, we'll be stylizing it. We'll be keeping its style to linear gradient and I'll be keeping the colors to default black and white. And for the stroke, you can adjust the gradient by changing the position of these dashed line points. And this is how currently our shape layer looks like. Next we'll be using the circle tool to create a circle for the images and this is how our circle will look like. We'll be keeping its stroke off and then adjust the position of it. Next we'll be adding the stock images. We'll be adding the first image into our composition. I'll be adjusting its scale and then we'll be track matting the image to shape layer 2 which is the circle layer. After that I'll be creating a duplicate of shape layer 2 but this time I'll be keeping its fill off and keeping its stroke on. So in the end it will look something like this. Next I'll be using the text tool to create a text layer and I'll be getting some 5 star reviews of Apple from Trustpilot. Though currently it seems like they do not have many good reviews right now. We'll be copying the text of this review and adding it into our composition. I'll be keeping the font SF Pro and keep its weight to semi bold. And then adjust the font size so it is set perfectly in the text box. And we'll be adjusting the line spacing as well. After that I'll be needing another text layer but I'll be needing it to create this quotation mark. I'll be increasing the size of this quotation mark and changing the font style to tactic sans bold and this is how our quotation mark will look like next i'll be adding a gradient ramp effect onto our quotation mark and then adjust its colors to something like this after that i'll be creating another text layer but this time i'll be needing it to create the names so from trust palette we'll be getting one name so we'll be adding the names from the trust pilot website and let's add this name george bittuck and i'll be changing back the font style to sf pro but this time i'll be keeping its weight to medium next i'll be getting this usa flag in apple style from the internet and add it into the composition i'll be adjusting the scale and position of it so it looks something like this next i'll be creating stars using the star tool so that we can describe the review and we'll be keeping the stroke off we'll be keeping the fill on and we'll be styling it to linear gradient and we'll be adjusting its colors so it looks something like this in golden format after the first star is set we'll be adding a deep glow effect into our star and we'll be adjusting its exposure so it is not glowing too much and then we'll be adjusting its anchor point right in the middle once that is done we'll be creating a scale up animation of the star and once our keyframes are added we'll be selecting both the keyframes pressing the f9 button and using the graph editor we'll be making them faster so it looks something like this and after that we'll be duplicating the first star so that we can add four more stars so that we can have the five stars complete after that I've adjusted the exposure of the deep glow of all the stars and made it to 0.04 because it was glowing too much right now. And now I feel like it looks perfect. Next what we'll be doing is actually selecting the image as well as the shape layers which were used to stylize it and then pre-compose it. And then adjust this anchor point right in the middle of the image. 
so that we can create a clean scale up animation. We will be creating the keyframes for the scale up animation and then selecting both the keyframes, pressing the F9 button and using the graph editor we will be making them faster. So it looks something like this. For the name, we will be going into the effects and presets tab and use an animation preset called fade up words and this is how will be the name showing up. Similarly for the flag we will be creating another scale up animation and we will be adding the keyframes for it as well as adjusting the pacing of the keyframe. And similarly for the quotation mark what we will be doing is actually create a position keyframe as well as an opacity keyframe and make it come from the right side just like this. And this is how currently our text box looks like. We will be just adjusting some keyframes so that all the elements are shown on time and adjust the keyframes of the stars so they are popped up one by one. And once that is done what we will be doing is actually create a duplicate of the rounded rectangle angle and we'll be keeping its fill off but we'll be keeping the stroke on. Similarly what we'll be doing for the first rounded rectangle we'll be keeping its stroke off but we'll be lowering its opacity so that we can see through the text box. And then once our text box is all set we'll be pre-composing all the elements of the text box so it is all adjusted in just one pre-composition. And we'll be renaming the pre-composition to review 1 as well as make it 3D. Similarly we'll be renaming the pre-composition of the triangles triangle 1 and triangle 2 and as well as the apple logo png as well. Now we'll be adjusting the rotation of the review 1 layer but first what we need to do is use the anchor point mover tool to adjust the anchor point and make the anchor point right in the middle of the rounded rectangle like you guys can see on the screen right now. And then we'll be adjusting its rotation and in the end this is how the review 1 pre-composition looks like. But you guys can see on the screen currently the glow of the pre-composition is being cut out. So to fix this what we'll be doing is going into the composition and then go to the composition settings and increase the height and width of the pre-composition. Once that is done you guys can see that the issue is fixed. But of course we need to adjust the anchor point once again. And in the end this is how currently our composition looks like. There is one final change in the review and composition is that the colors of the gradient of the quotation mark layer has been changed as well so it is not visible properly and its color has been completely turned black. So we need to adjust its gradient so it looks perfectly like it was before. Once that is done our review composition will be all set and next we will be creating a position as well as a opacity keyframe so that we can transition the review one pre-composition into our scene something like this. Once the keyframes are created we will be selecting all the keyframes and using the graph editor we will be making them faster. And this is how our review one pre-composition looks like. After that inside our project we will be creating a duplicate of pre-composition 3 which is the same layer which has the first review and we will be duplicating it so that we can create that second review as well. So we can go to Trustpilot to get the details of the second review and then I'll be quickly adding them. And in the end this is how the second review will look like. I'll be adjusting its anchor point as well as making it 3D and then adjust its rotation so it looks something like this. And similarly for the review 2 as well, we'll be creating a position as well as an opacity keyframe like we did for the review 1. And in the end this is how our scene will look like. Now we'll be looking to animate our cube and we'll be adding animation to its x and y axis as well as position of the cube and we'll be adding all these keyframes inside the front layer because all the other layers are parallel to it and the changes on them will be automatically done. Once our keyframes are all made, we'll be selecting all the keyframes, pressing the F9 button and using the graph editor, we'll be making them faster. And this is currently how the cube animation looks like. We'll be adjusting the keyframes so that the animation is completed quickly. And this is how currently our scene looks like. After the next, we'll be creating a new camera layer as well as a new null layer. And we'll be parenting the camera to the null layer. And then make the null layer to 3D. And then we'll be adding position keyframe to the null layer just like this which you guys can see on the screen. The reason why we have done this is because it will add a zoom out effect right at the very start of the scene. I'll be adjusting the graph so that the main zoom out is actually done right at the point where the logo is being revealed. Now here to transition to the second part of the scene, we'll be decreasing the value of the z-axis so that the first scene goes way behind. We'll be increasing the size of our background layer so it covers the the whole area. And now again you guys can see that the glow of the triangles are being cut out again. So now we'll be going to the triangle pre-composition, go to the composition settings and then increase the height and width of the composition. And I'll be making changes to the gradient a little bit as well. Currently the whole scene looks like this. After that what I'll be doing is actually getting screenshots from the trust pilot itself and I'll be looking to add them like you guys can see on the screen right now. So first because we want to create proper text boxes, we'll be using the rounded rectangle tool to create a rounded rectangle. Once the shape layer is created, we'll be adjusting the roundness of the rounded rectangle to something like this. I'll be keeping its fill on and then I'll be creating another duplicate but this time for it I'll be keeping its fill off and keep its stroke on. And then what I'll be doing is actually I'll be track matting our screenshot to shape layer 2 which is the shape layer which has the fill on. And then I'll be adjusting the screenshot so it fits perfectly inside the rounded rectangle. Once our screenshot is all set, we'll be selecting all the elements and then pre-composing it. And once that is done, we'll be making the pre-composition 3D. And now you guys can see on the screen, the screenshot has gone exactly to the place where the previous elements are. So for that, what we'll be doing is actually adjust the position of the screenshot. And our aim is to make the screenshot actually behind the camera, like you guys can see through the custom view. So as our screenshot now is behind the camera, it will be not visible at the start of the scene and it will be only visible when the camera is actually positioned behind as well. Now once that is done, I'll be adjusting the scale of the screenshot 
to something like this and adjust his position. And then I'll be creating duplicates of screenshots inside the project so where we can make changes later on and then add all the screenshots into our composition. And then I'll be making them 3D and then copying the position of the first screenshot as well as set their scale so that all other screenshots are positioned behind the camera as well. And now similarly, I'll be adding all the other screenshots and I'll be lowering the opacity of the screenshots of the right and left side so that we can make their focus on the screen a lot less. Once all the seven screenshots are added, we'll be adding a drop shadow effect next. The first drop shadow will look something like this and then we'll be copying that drop shadow effect and then adding it onto all our screenshots. Now we'll be adding a Gaussian blur effect onto the screenshots which are onto the left as well as the right side so that we can make their focus even more or less and get that camera type feel into our scene. And then I'll be copying the Gaussian blur effect into the two left side as well as the two right side screenshots. And this is how currently our complete composition looks like. Now we'll be adding a scale up animation in the middle screenshots. So first I'll be adjusting their anchor points right in the middle and then create scale keyframes. And once all the keyframes are created, we'll be selecting all the keyframes, pressing the F9 button and then adjust the timing of the keyframes so the screenshots are popping one by one. I'll be just adjusting the position of the first screenshot and yeah, other than that, I feel like our animation is all set. Now once our screenshots are all set and positioned perfectly, I'll be just changing the position of the screenshot so that all the seven screenshots have different reviews. And in the end currently, this is how exactly our animation looks like. Now to add some final touches, first I'll be creating a new adjustment layer and then add a CC vignette effect onto it. Once the layer is created, first I'll be selecting the layer and then go to the ellipse tool and then create a mask on the adjustment layer. And then we'll be inverting the mask as well as we'll be increasing its feather. So it looks something like this. The reason why we have done this is to get that more cinematic look into our scene. After that, I'll be creating another adjustment layer and adding a posture time effect onto the layer and set the frame rate to 18. And then I'll be adding another adjustment layer and this time I'll be adding the exposure effect and set its exposure to something like this. And then I'll be pressing Alt and clicking the stopwatch to get the expression bar. And then I'll be adding an expression 4 and 0 0.15 so that we can get exposure blinking effect into our scene. And finally, we'll be adding our last adjustment layer and then we'll be adding a lumetric color effect so that we can add more adjustments into the color of the scene and make the colors as well as the scene overall more popped out. This is how the scene looks like before the lumetric color effect and this is how the scene looks like after the lumetric color effect. And in the end, this is how exactly our scene looks like. Currently, I feel like the exposure of the lumetric color is very high. So I'll be adjusting the exposure to 0.3 and now I feel like it's perfectly set. So yes, that is the animation all completed. If you found the video valuable, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so that I can get more videos like these. Now, if you want to watch more valuable content, you can check out this video here. And yeah, hopefully see you soon.